Uh, I, I noticed last night, Congressman, that uh, Trump only had about 4,000 people at his rally. Uh, by Bernie numbers, that's pretty small. I'm, I'm wondering, and, and there were tens of thousands of protesters outside. Uh, I, I'm wondering, I, this, is, this is a story I'm not seeing on the press, and it would be the one story that would make Trump crazy. What? My crowd size was small? But it really seems like that's the case. Well, and that's the thing. He kept saying he had 15,000 people, I think, in tweets, and he kept saying there's a very, very small crowd outside of uh, counter-protests. Um, yeah, this is Donald Trump, right? I mean, we watched him again last night, uh, you know, doing his best impersonation of a man-child, you know. Uh, I think that's probably the best definition we have for his behavior. And, uh, you know, he needed this de desperately for his narcissism. He needed to have some people applaud him and you know, kind of hang out with him, and that's why he does these rallies. So, um, you know, it's not like he has support. The polls show us more than enough that he doesn't have any public support, but this is what he does to keep going, to keep his narcissism, uh, you know, fully fueled. Yeah, yeah, it's it's truly remarkable. Um, have We we haven't talked since uh, Paul Ryan did that hour-long infomercial on CNN with uh, uh, Jake Tapper. Uh, it it did not strike me as a town hall at all. <laughs> is is Paul Ryan doing town halls? Is there something I missed? No, no, he's still not. Um, you know, we uh, actually live tweeted during it and had a lot of uh, interesting feedback from people who also were, you know, uh, realizing that any real town hall that any member in the country has. I guarantee you get more than one question on health care, uh, and that's what they had. And, um, you know, they had some Democrats, some Republicans ask questions, and it was all very scripted, but it's not a real interaction with your constituents. And, you know, I thought the standout answer of the evening that showed why Paul Ryan uh, has, has become completely Washington and disconnected with the country is when he said that the president, with his comments on, on Charlottesville, uh, simply messed up. And, you know, I think you mess up when you forget your telephone charger, uh, but you don't mess up when you say there's very fine people who are Nazis and, and Klansmen. And I think for him to get that kind of a pass, Paul Ryan showed that, you know, uh, he, he did something to claim he was doing a town hall, didn't really interact with his constituents. And the reason he doesn't interact is he's not in touch with them anymore. I mean, this is a guy who has gone completely Washington. Wow. Wow. Uh, it's, it, it, it's really an extraordinary moment in time and I, I you know I, I I keep asking myself and I keep asking my listeners um, how much longer can he pull this off I mean the, the Washington Post yesterday uh, ran an article about how as of this moment Trump has told over a thousand lies um, and, and mischaracterization misstatements whatever you, you want to call the, the half lies half truths um, at at, at what point, and, and you've got that, and you've got, you know, Trump openly taking on Jeff Flake, John McCain, and Mitch McConnell. And, you know, there's this, uh, this theory, actually. Apparently, Roger Stone said to him, like, let me get the exact quote. It was, it was pretty damn spooky. Um, oh, where'd it go? Roger Stone was talking about, here we go. The president should start bumping off incumbent Republican members of Congress in the primaries, Stone said. If he did that, Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan would wet their pants and the rest of the Republicans would get in line. Now, this was, you know, one of Richard Nixon's advisors, if my memory is correct. Um, does it seem that the Republicans are wetting their pants as, uh, as, uh, the, as Trump goes after these high-profile Republicans? Well, I think the strategy is, seems to be what's going on, right? I mean, he's attacking uh, Jeff Flake very clearly in Arizona in his home state yesterday, as he's been doing for a while. But, you know, I think that they're torn on which uh, wetting their pants moment they have. Is it the, that he might give them primaries and they got to deal with that? Or is it that his rating, his polling goes down so far, so deep, that they know their fortunes are attached to the president at what point do they jump ship and start, you know, hey, Mike Pence, God, he's great, you know, and, and realizing that uh, Donald Trump is on his way out. So I think they're torn between the two, right? I mean, Donald Trump is trying to create the fear factor by going after them. But the reality is uh, Donald Trump's actions are creating this reverse vacuum. And last week was the first poll I saw where it is 90 percent of the the base that supported him all of a sudden went down to 79 percent. He's starting to lose his base even. And I think they're torn on which direction to go. Yeah.
At, at, at what point does the Republican Party acknowledge that a certain percentage of their base is actually Klan's members and Nazis? Richard Spencer tweeted out last night that uh, Donald Trump, actually, I can get you the exact quote again on this one. I know where it is. Um, he says, uh, oh, it's not where I thought it was. <laughs> just, just when I, you know, just when you think you've got it all. Uh, in any case, something something to the effect of Donald Trump is never going to abandon us. You know, it's uh, words that he will he will not trash the alt right. I guess that was the phrase. Well, think what he did last night. So he read off the words KKK, white supremacist. I'll hit a difficult time saying it. Um, you know, uh, uh, neo Nazis. And as he said it, he was like he was checking a box. I said the words. I did my job. And then he immediately got on to talking about our history and our heritage that's trying to be taken away. And he gave all the, the dog whistles again. You know, I, to me, if you really, I mean, if you're the president of the United States, you should have disgust. You should have uh, the, the, the worst feeling when you have neo-Nazis on the streets in the United States. And instead, this guy, it's like a check. Look, I said him. I said him. See, I told you. And yet he doesn't actually show any contempt for neo-Nazis and, and KKK members, which is, again, why he immediately goes back to that our history, our heritage, the dog whistle for those folks. So, you know, I, I know where Donald Trump is. Donald Trump clearly is fine with being in the bigot category and keeping those people as a base. It's just, you know, wrong on many levels. Yeah, yeah, to say the very least. Congressman Mark Pokey, and it's our Middays with Mark Hour, taking your phone calls right after this.